Um, and so you, I, I mentioned, you know, battery pack and improvements as a, as a key enabler for the, some of this taking off and kind of where we'll probably fo focus for a bit here is the, uh, the propulsion or the drive. I don't know if you call it a drive system necessarily for, for, yeah, uh, sure. um, but yeah, can, can you speak to kind of why, why is it so important that the electric motor and everything that comes with that, the, in, the inverter, any gearbox, et cetera, why is it important that weight and efficiency is improved there? Yeah, that's a great question. Um, first, just to the elephant in the room, right, is like, you know, some people are, are adamant to like batteries are too heavy. They're like nowhere near they need where they need to be in order to, you know, make this happen. Right. And so like, why are we talking about this in the first place? So, um, yeah, I mean, I, I'm happy to go into the propulsion system side and I will in a second, but I just want to address that uh, quickly because, um, you know, from the perspective of our company, um, you know, we focus on the propulsion system, which is basically everything from the DC power being supplied, um, not the energy storage system, but, you know, from the DC cables, basically all the mm -hmm. way out to, um, you know, the shaft that you connect to the primary, you know, propeller, for example. Um, so uh, in that sense, we're energy storage agnostic um, as a company, you know, we're not, we're not tied to, um, is it a battery system? Is it a fuel cell system? Is it a hybrid system? Um, in all of these different um, architectures, our technology uh, will play a key role. Um, and so, you know, for, for urban air mobility, for example, battery electric, um, you know, we're very close to the point where it, will work for flights less than 50 miles, um, you know, pure battery electric. Um, for regional air mobility and, and longer flights, uh, it's definitely more challenging. Um, and that's where you'll see um, probably hydrogen fuel cells or hybrid systems or, you know, one or the other um, coming into play where the energy density is, is better. Um, and so, uh, you know, even in, a, in a, a series hybrid system, you have, you know, a generator, um, that is hooked up um, to an engine of some sort. Uh, and then that supplies power to say a distributed electric propulsion system. And, and even that, you know, you say, well, why, why wouldn't I just stick a bunch of, you know, combustion engines, you know, to, as primary propulsors? Because, you know, like we've seen in cars, there are, are lots of benefits of doing a hybridized system, both aerodynamically for, for you know, distributed electric propulsion, mm -hmm. but also in, a, you know, in terms of efficiency where you can run your, your, uh, your engine yeah, at its happiest point, um, generating that electricity. And so, you know, we want to see all of the above succeed. You know, it's going to be a mix of things that are, are going to get us to a pure electric future. Um, and we want to see all of them succeed. Um, and, you know, like I said, we're, we're not tied to, you know, batteries needing to work perfectly for everything. Um, yeah, perfect. Thanks so, for that clarification. Make, makes a lot yeah. of sense. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, and, and also, um, you know, feel free to cut this out later because I, I, I will get going about stuff. But um, specifically with hydrogen fuel cells, you know, Elon even many times has been like hydrogen fuel cells are stupid. Like they're so inefficient, they're terrible. And what's interesting is um, for automotive applications, I can maybe see where he's coming from, but um, when it comes to aviation applications, even though there's a significant, uh, you know, a loss of energy in the conversion process, both in, um, you know, creating the hydrogen, um, you know, electrolysis, and then also in the converting it back to electricity, um, even with those inefficiencies, it still presents a higher energy density solution than, um, than pure battery electric. And so, um, you know, for aircraft with such a high ma mass sensitivity, um, even with those inefficiency penalties, it still is a compelling um, solution. And, yeah. you know, you're, you're kind of pushing a lot of that inefficiency to the ground in some sense, because that first step of hydrogen generation, yes, it's lossy, but it's not happening on the vehicle. So, that, that kind of, uh, the mass impact is kind of negated in that sense. Um, so anyway, um, that's, that's, that's why I think there's, there's gonna be a mix of, you know, hybrid hydrogen and, and battery electric solutions across the board in the future. So um, anyway, that aside, 
to answer your question, um, why do we care about the propulsion system then, you know, um, you know, motors are already pretty light, right? Um, and, and, you know, that's, that's kind of, we've heard that many a time. Um, and, uh, you know, there has been a significant amount of improvement um, with the kind of um, proliferation of electric propulsion technology and automotive um, in terms of power density and efficiency. Um, you know, obviously Tesla kind of started, uh, started with the Roadster and, and, you know, many years ago now. And since then, their technology has gotten significantly better. You're seeing like really, really impressive, um, you know, uh, efficiency numbers in terms of watt hours per mile um, for a lot of EVs now. And, you know, the big automotive companies are now also, of course, um, you know, taking uh, a role in this electrification, um, but aerospace and aviation uh, mass sensitivity is a whole like different echelon from automotive. Um, and so there are some key differences. Um, right now, a lot of, uh, you know, drive units that you'll see for cars are in the two to three kilowatts per kilogram range. Um, and if you look at, you know, what is the most cutting edge electric um, aerospace propulsion systems that are currently on the market, which there are like a couple, um, you know, that we're talking when you combine the motor gearbox, if it, you know, is necessary and inverter, you're talking like four kilowatts per kilogram, continuous. Um, and so, you know, that's like 50% better than the automotive, for example. Um, but uh, you know, a one of the um, DOE ARPA E um, studies um, showed that for a 737 to complete a five-hour flight, um, you know, you need 12 kilowatts per kilogram, and you need uh, to do that at greater than 93% efficiency. So, um, you know, we're talking a significant, like a, like multiples of specific power uh, or power density over what currently exists in automotive. Um, and, you know, the, the way that you get there, uh, of course, is primarily by spending money. Um, you know, like there's, there's no way around it. You know, automotive is extremely cost sensitive. And so, you know, it's, it's very common to be literally pinching pennies on the propulsion system design um, because of just the sheer um, volumes yep. um, involved. And so, you know, aerospace uh, has, has less cost sensitivity. Of course, like as electric propulsion becomes more ubiquitous, the cost sensitivity will, inc will increase as the volumes increase. Um, so, you know, it's not like it doesn't exist. It's not like you can do whatever you want. Uh, but uh, because the mass sensitivity is, is so much greater, there's um, a cost justification for for really pushing the materials and the manufacturing technologies to make something that's significantly lighter than what currently exists. 